okay, am I safe? I'm going to say what? I'm going to say my father. Um, partially the way he handles situations, um, or handle, it's passed on. Um, in general, good-natured about things. Could be serious, but still good-natured. Doesn't, didn't let things ruffle him too much. On the confident side, um, uh, and milking, forget, forget how to do as opposed to why not to do. Um, uh, and kind of connected to this project, he was often the first or second in to do something. Um, growing, I mean, when he was working and growing up. So he was one of a big family, but often in different work situations, he might be the first or second in the situation. Um, uh, so I think that's a lot of it. Um, and also, I'm just fortunate to have had that role model throughout life to always reinforce things. So if I have to pick one, that's what I'm picking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I heard you say that an important adult in your life uh, was your father, is your father, um, that uh, he was a man who taught you a lot about life and that you appreciated his, um, his being serious but not too serious, um, you know, and that you also saw him as someone who would um, take the first step or would be one of two. It, he was out there starting things, initiating things, um, and you value who he is as a as a leader and uh, uh, how he taught you in growing up. Did I hear you right? <laughs> a lot of it, I think. Am I supposed to respond? Yes. Okay, yeah, I think a lot of it. I mean, the places where it probably wasn't clear, I don't think I was clear. So, um, because I think one of them was I said he was often first or second or something. So I mean, when he he worked for Bell Telephone, so he was actually the first African American to be given certain tasks. Mm -hmm. So he was first or second. So taking the step or being on the front line and taking a positive yeah. or negative way, right? Yeah. So I wasn't clear when I said that. So I think that's why I came yeah. back that way. But otherwise, I think you nailed it. And yeah. and I saw, like I saw, so he's um there was a confidence factor. And, and, a and how to yeah. figure out how to do as opposed to accepting we can't. Right, yes. Yeah, those I, so I hear you saying that you, he taught you how to, to, he approached things by how to do something as opposed to what not to do, and that he was really taking the first steps in areas of his life, such as with working with Bell Telephone, yeah. Uh, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. So he was, he was breaking barriers. Yes, he, very much he so. could say. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know you didn't say that, but... <laughs> well, but you used it, and it was right. Actually, that's hearing it and yeah. absorbing it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Well, I would say, um, I, I'm like you, there, there are people, adults, who um, I've appreciated and valued muchly, but I would say it's my mother. Okay. Um, my mother was a woman of, is, she's still living at 92. She's a, a woman of uh, principles. Um, and I think she was someone that was always demonstrating how to be a good neighbor. Hey. She um, liked to do things for other people. She also, um, I think when I do my activism type stuff, um, she was a lady who was out there um, teaching, like at she was teaching in an integrated swimming pool. Um, actually, it was not integrated. It was in the housing development, and it was all it was all African American at that time. And it, people would say, "You're going to go in and teach in the swimming pool." This was back in the '60s, and um, she was like, "Yes, you know, everybody needs to learn how to swim." She she felt that very strongly. So she kind of like your dad, I think, in some ways was breaking barriers, and. I admire that because I think she wanted to help create a, a world that was equitable and just for everybody, and I think those are values that I I value too. Okay, cool. It's a rambling, just That's whatever okay. you get out of it. No, well, I mean, actually a lot, because um, some of it's connecting out things we've already talked about, so it's actually making it easier, but the, not easier, but helps put together puzzles. So um, definitely you had your mother, who's still with you, who's still alive in 92. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I'm not, I can't remember the order of when you said it, but things are stuck. These things stuck. Um, one example of 
being a good neighbor and being active, being an active good neighbor, and that that helped you in terms of being activist. Um, stuck to prince, stuck to her principles, or had a strong set of principles. And the example of taking us of teaching swimming at a segregated pool in Richmond, Virginia, in the '60s, um, which is a pretty strong example, actually, that really sticks in there. Um, especially thinking about the fact that, if I'm not mistaken, you said she'd been from North, she either from North Carolina or went to Chapel Hill. From North um, Carolina too. So to be a child of that region and to realize everybody has to learn to swim, here's something we need, and then to be part of that solution um, is something that stuck with you through life. It's kind of, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, you did a great job. Yeah, so. <laughs> Again, it's, it's, tying things together helps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I would say I felt really accepted um, by uh, when I was in graduate school, okay? So I went off uh, to graduate school, went back to graduate school at Richmond, at Richmond, it was, at that time it was called the Presbyterian School of Christian Education, okay. which was part, also affiliated with Union Seminary, a Presbyterian oh, okay. Seminary. And um, so I met um, an African-American young man there who was also in graduate school. And okay. I would say basically to, that we really liked each other a lot okay. and um, felt very accepted by him. Okay. Um, just, and I, I still have books from him that I treasure where he wrote inscriptions about um, our studies and our visions for the world and that sort of thing. But I remember the many late nights, um, you know, sitting around, hanging out with him and, and talking about um, just what we felt we were called to. And uh, oh, okay. he, he now is uh, working in Washington, D.C. as the director of um, policy and governmental affairs for the Presbyterian Church. Uh, oh, cool. He's Presbyterian minister. Okay. So, um, but I would say, and I'll, and I'll give you a story, it was very interesting. I felt close enough to him that we both worked in a community recreation center. Okay. And he, um, it was a skate, the skating rink that I referred to earlier. And we had parents who would pick their children up after school. Okay. And this particular day, a mother had come late to get her child. And so, of course, we waited with the children. Yeah. Uh, until the, the parent came. And one of the little boys, um, they were African-American boys, had taken the car, a little car out to the playground to wait and play with it. And um, so when the mother arrived, she said, all right, boys, come on, let's go. And the little boy was walking off, and he still had the car in the hand. And I called out to her. I said, you need to leave that car here. And she got really angry at me. She felt like I was accusing her sons of stealing. And I didn't know I had come across that way to her. And I was like, no, I'm not saying that. You know, I tried to defend myself. And my friend, Jimmy was his, is his name, I, I said to him later, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you speak up and say, you know, oh, no, you know, she, she wasn't probably accusing your son of stealing. And he just looked at me, and I'll never forget it. I, he just said, I didn't want to be a... Uh, uh, an Uncle Tom, where I'm siding with the white person uh, in that situation. Okay. And I, but I, well, the reason I f say that is that I felt like I could talk to him yeah. and, and say, you know, I was upset that she reacted to me that way, that she would assume I was stealing. And he really heard me, and I really heard him for the first time understanding the, the, the dynamics of race relations and yeah. uh, so um it, it it's that's a powerful friendship i still have to this oh, cool. day okay good yeah okay. yeah all right my, the beginning of i might be vaguer than i will well so we're talking about specifically about time in richmond graduate school and it's funny because it's union but not theological it's union seminary or union seminary school or college or something yeah. um, um, and taking classes and there's Jimmy mm -hmm. um, um, was another graduate student hung out a lot took classes together um, still, in, still in touch um, and 
it's so touching to the fact that because he's doing policy work at the Presbyterian Church in DC now. Right. Um, so still in touch. And then the one story at a recreation center um, where there's a skating rink. I think that's what you yeah. said. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as it will happen, parents are coming up by to pick up their kids. And somebody was later, so there were still kids there, and doing the right thing for adults. It's like, okay, we're going to make sure all the kids are gone before we leave. And this mother came to pick up her kid who was playing with the car. And when you basically said to the kid, hey, don't forget, you have to leave the car, she heard that as an accusation. Um, and you, at that moment, had, you felt you had to be defensive. Probably did, actually. Um, and then when it was over, I asked Jimmy, why didn't you help clarify? And at that point, Jimmy had, had to make one of those on-the-fly, I'm going to call it like a, either an on-the-fly decision or his response was because he'd been conditioned to say, I couldn't do that because I come across as Uncle Tom. Um, which at that point, also for you, even though you guys were already friends, made you both, I, ah, maybe I'm reinterpreting this no, now, no. but made you both more aware of the situations you're living in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I really came away from that when he told me that. that yeah. I was like, I hadn't thought about that. I just, yeah. it didn't occur to me. Yeah. So, yeah, you did a great, you did a great job remembering. <laughs> I need to practice more of this. <laughs> well, remember, we don't have any... Those brain cells, synapses <laughs> going. Well, our, our cell phones are far away. That helps. <laughs> okay, Keith, how about you? Oh, geez, that's when right. When did I'm you gonna... feel you've um, been hurt by a person of another race? Wow. Um, this is going to be a really weird answer. Um, well... And then I'll, I'll make it easier. Well, maybe I don't know if I can make it easier. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't know if this is me, or because actually the word is, is it heard or accepted. What's the word in the question? You can take either one. Which one applies yeah. to what you want okay. to say? <laughs> um, so I rarely am unaccepted. Um, now, part of these, I think. I, before I knew what the term was, I code switch a lot. You what? I code switch a lot. Code before I knew what that was term, yeah. basically grew up doing it, right? So I'm not even thinking about it. Um, so to, de to diffuse potential tensions, I did a lot. Um, so I think the number of times I've been accepted is really the majority. Hard. Um, yeah, I guess the, the time that sticks, the moment sticks in my mind the most. As being heard and, and thinking of it as being heard. Yeah, I'm going to do it that way. At times it was like, wow, I'm actually being heard here. Um, uh, there's a friend, Jim Ketch. He was the, a colleague at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill from Indiana, um, about 10 years older than me. Um, not just a colleague, in the many ways a mentor, a professional mentor. Um, and we did a lot of the same freelancing. So we're both, this is, I'm a, Many people make assumptions that are incorrect. So I'm primarily classically trained, but also work in jazz and commercial music. He's primarily jazz trained, but works also in classical music, but he's white. So the assumption for uh, many people make about him is like, oh man, you really study jazz later in life, so you could really make this authentic. And the people make about me is, man, you really study classical music later in life, so you can make this authentic when it's actually, and that's the assumption we're making based on our, our race. So we had this conversation, we had many conversations, actually, except for people I'm related to, probably more conversations about, except for people related to, more conversations about race than probably anybody else in my life. Um, and they would often be on, in, the, in vans on the way back from, he had, a, he had a minivan, on the way back from gigs. And talking about race and the way people perceive that so so again heard many times but then actually at the time when I was talking about leaving Chapel Hill to come here mm. um, and that was in many ways because of not him and not the broader university probably but the school of the Department of Music at Chapel Hill so here's my mentor somebody who's become a mentor and a friend and a colleague and talking about this like this this uh, this is not an environment that I can continue to function. 
um, and him hearing why that was, and he was sad, and I was sad too. Um, uh, but him hearing these things, and again, I think it was because we had had a convers- so many conversations over time, to hear that different level, like, you yeah, know, this, this ain't gonna get better. Mm. Um, to be honest, they don't want me here. Wow. And that's not you, but they don't want me here, so, and, and I can either get, give up on principles, or I can leave. So, yeah, so I was all, so good luck repeating that one. Wow. <laughs> no, I think that, that wow. Um, so I heard you saying about um, a friend you had and colleague named Jim Catch. Yeah. In uh, North Carolina, University of North Carolina. Yeah. And you felt um, really heard by him. You've, you've had many moments in your life where you feel accepted um, and I'll have to ask some more later about the, especially what you mean about the code switching. But, um, you, but there have been many situations in your life where you feel accepted. But when you really felt heard was when Jim Ketch was, um, when you were traveling with him back and forth to your your gigs, as I'll say, <laughs> um, and and you had a chance to talk about race relations. But then when you were having particular um, struggles with staying at, <clears throat> at UNC. And you never came out and said this, but I'm guessing it's because of, um, because of racial issues um, there in, in, in the university. And that he was able to hear that and understand why it was impossible for you to really continue there in that situation, in that harmful um, setting. Um, and so you left and Came yeah. here. Yeah, came here, yeah. Yeah, you captured it. Yeah, you did, actually. Even the places I didn't quite film the gaps, you captured it. Well, yeah. The, yeah. the line of it, but yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Wow, yeah. that's that's yeah. that's tough. Yeah. 